September 20th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with the Sherman Likes, episode number uh, 571. And it's going to be one of those episodes. Did we have a thing for this? I don't remember. I don't think we ever made one. I mean, it's it, it's kind of already been played, but but it's kind of one of those episodes which this is related. I to. don't brew the tea; I just serve it. <laughs> this is an ATNS Maybe. for those who, people who don't know the acronym. It's Alti No Shade. Uh, Gary, can you elaborate? Um, I can. So, uh, one of our uh world at large entourage members sent us a suggestion for a topic of discussion whoop, whoop. and we discussed it as co-hosts and we feel that specifically the item that was brought up is not something that we can weigh in a whole lot on in terms of uh subject matter expertise like we certainly have opinions which we hmm. will probably get into but um That's my opinion <laughs> <laughs> so instead we uh, kind of Plato fun factory did and was like, okay, let's have a broader discussion. And today's episode is called Pedestal to Cancel. Mm -mm. Um, so, in case y'all are really kind of confused, or, as to or what's... kind of a, it, it, to me, there's kind of a question mark in there, but kind well, of, is, depending on how somebody reacts, but correct, like, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Yeah, I didn't think about putting the question mark into the title, so. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah. It's everybody's interpretation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's my but, interpretation! Sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, I guess we should do this. Um, let me look online real quick. Uh, Damon, do you want to look up, um, since we kind of do definition stuff sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. about cancel culture? Sure. And I'm going to... If my computer will type. There we go. Look at that. So pedestal is usually reference to a support of an item to be put on display. Um, usually it's like for a statue, a uh, piece of artwork, those type of things. And sometimes we make references to that we put people and or things up on a pedestal. Like mm -hmm. we look up to them because we admire them. We mm -hmm. think that they... Um, have qualities that we appreciate that they, you know, have a certain kind of, um, like Edward Angelini Cook, <laughs> who is like a uh, COO Joshua Pistol. Pangborn. Like, we, 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 there's a plethora of people. That's a different pedestal, though. Yeah, but that's an right. example of pedestal. I mean, those are people I want to put on a pedestal, so I'm at eye level to the thing that I want to be eye level to. <laughs> that's another issue. So, <laughs> want to raise them up so that you can it's easier access. Hello. I mean, yeah. So I mean, so it, obvi. There, there's there's one would who would like them. like sling, and the others that would like pedestals. I mean, depending possibly. on their their current position, I suppose. I mean, but who doesn't love a blowjob? Not many. Some people. I mean, I mean, it's possible. I mean, but you're you, but you, Gary's right. Not many. Yeah. You or know, we could swap locations. If I that's mean, <laughs> kind of an issue, you know. Yeah. As long as you get the dick, like, 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 <laughs> like that's, there's some tea there. Like, as long as happy. everybody's happy at the end, that's uh -huh. the point. There you go. Speaking of not being happy at the end, mm -hmm. so there's been a recent thing that's come up. I would say probably in the past handful of years less than five years, maybe two or three, or even sooner, called cancel culture. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not fully versed in it, other than I know in social media, people tend to be canceled if there's a kind of group think or population that has a disagreement with mm -hmm. a particular individual's viewpoints, thoughts, opinions, things that are expressed, posted, whatever that may be. Yeah. So um, I'm going to actually, believe it or not, dictionary.com has uh. a definition of cancel culture. So I'm going to read that one first. Okay. And I thought I had 
the one for Urban Dictionary app, but I don't, so I'm going to wait. Dictionary.com is the new Merriam-Webster. <laughs> yeah. But um, Dictionary.com defines cancel culture as um, cancel culture refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support for canceling public figures and companies after they have done or said something considered objectionable or offensive. Cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media in the form of group shaming. And that's the definition that they have. Shame. Um, Shame. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> I've yeah. seen that. I've seen that 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 gif uh, mm -hmm. meme quite a bit. Yeah. And then ah, too many things up. Too many windows open. Um, I think it's kind of the same on Urban Dictionary. Um, oh no, it's not. Okay, so. Urban Dictionary defines cancel culture or canceling as to dismiss something or somebody and to, quote, reject an individual or idea. And when people use the term unironically, it reveals a big problem with our culture. Cancel culture as it currently exists does not get, doesn't give people a chance to learn from or apologize for their wrongdoings. Interesting. Which is, is... A, which is a, a, a good viewpoint. Um, I think, but with is especially, I think part of it is with cancel culture is, is some of the people who do this do she do these do she things. They don't apologize. Well, so we I was should, we're say. trying to shame them into that, have them uh, somehow amend their ways, and they don't. I I think there's a big distinction between. Ooh. You can make amends. You can uh, you can attempt to uh, repair like the damage that's been done. But this is more about when you double down, triple down, quad, quint. Like you just keep reaffirming repeatedly, like digging in further, which means you're drawing a line. You're making a distinction. Mm -hmm. There is you know a there just doesn't is there doesn't seem to be a uh, remorse, or an attempt to build a bridge for understanding about why there is a difference of opinion or perspective between you know mm -hmm. the individual and the masses, so to speak, yeah, or the public, be, or whichever. Yeah, for some of them, it's like I'm already rich, bitch. I don't care if you don't buy my stuff anymore. Well, and that's in a sense. part of where this, I think, gets mm. complicated, and we're going to have a little discussion about that, I think. Okay. <laughs> so, um, theoretically, there's the show topic, and I don't know how long we're going to discuss this, like, we might all be in agreement and be like, shut, close, case, done, bye! Um, you know, mm. uh, when people that we hold up uh, bring us down is kind of the concept. Like, mm -hmm. we looked for an individual, we perhaps aspire to be like them. We see them as a example of success. Like here in America, we have this, this concept, the, it's not a motto, but it's, you know, a, a, a um, I forget what the word is, this thing that you can, you know, ascribe to that you can pull yourself up and you can achieve and be successful and, you know, and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think what is, most challenging about that is when we see people that do that in their lives and basically come from the bottom, so to speak, financially, socially, economically, um, spiritually, whatever it is um, in their physical surroundings, and they bring themselves up, we tend to, you know, not so much compare, but say, look at what they've done, how great for them. I support them. I like what they put out into the world. You know, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. And then, sometimes, not often, you know, they basically become celebrities, but then they fail at being a decent human being. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, people say, you know, the truth comes out. 
you know, that, you know, the shadows will always be brought into the light. I mean, you know, we have all these like sayings and adages or whatever. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's much more painful to us who looked at these people mm -hmm. when it takes a much longer time for stuff to come out. Like, yeah for us to, to mm -hmm. learn about these things. So I've kind of got three examples of individuals. <laughs> well, I, more. And I was kind of debating on whether or not like we should just like, you know, make a whole like, you know, bingo card listing or whatever. But then I was like, <laughs> nah. I like the yeah, bingo that, card that's going on on Twitter right now. Which is not, like the sex that you've done. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. It also helped us can contain, contain it a little bit, just a little bit, you know, while, this, we, is we, a, this doesn't need to be a six hour long show. I know we're in determined at length, but <laughs> we're trying to be reasonable. Anyways, moving on. So, uh, candidate number one. <clears throat> Mr. Gary's no t-shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> different. <What? laughs> I thought you were going with a different candidate. <laughs> Which no. is re in relation to your T-shirt. Okay. Um, anyway, well, let's move it on. What, what maybe not. Maybe Anyways. not. I, I may might have been interpreting your T-shirt wrong. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So, candidate number one, uh, Mr. Bill Cosby. Yeah. Um, that is at one time referred to as like America's father or America's dad. I think. Mm -hmm. um, show. Correct. Jello, so, Fat Alpers, stand-up comedian, um, had a television show, was very popular for most of us when we were younger. Um, it was like must-see TV, as the saying goes, to mm -hmm. borrow a, a, a catchphrase of a major television network. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if they're using that anymore, but you know. I don't think so. But they probably are copyrighted or trademarked. Mm -hmm. uh, so the reality is, you know, that you see this person; mm -hmm. they brought laughter to our hearts you know and we yeah we like that you know people yeah. like to be entertained they like to you know have a good time and and to forget about the yeah. worries of the day or be distracted from them at least for a brief amount of time and, and he had he, great material yes he was a he was a role model yeah he was a he was a he was his his presence on TV, the 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 performances that he gave, the character he had, on top of what we believed at the time was his, you know, very, you know, his public life, his our private life was very kind of open, you know, and and um, he was always a the dad part is definitely true, like he, you know, he was definitely like the dad, but he was also a a, a, like I said, a role model that people would look up to, especially people in the African American community. Mm -hmm. Like they really, you know, we really, I keep saying they, but you know, me too. Um, we saw him as a person. What just happened? Uh, uh, Skype had a hiccup. Oh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but he, he was, he was in flappable like he could for a lot of us and a lot of people he could not do wrong mm -hmm. in a lot infallible. of ways when you think mm -hmm. about it you know infallible that's the word i was looking for thank you <laughs> Woo, that's words um but yeah that was sort of the idea was that he was someone that you could like we were talking about like look up to and revere and be want to emulate in your life, you know, the choices, the things that he did, the choices he made, supposedly, you know, he was successful um, um, and all of that kind of, for lack of a better phrase, has imploded in recent years. Right. For sure. I mean, his, his television show was the personification of an upper middle class American family, you know, with kids that were going to school, mm -hmm. um, successful employed parents dealing with the challenges of raising a family and you know which looking back on it to be honest in in 2020's eyes so to speak or 2020 viewpoint so out of touch um yeah. i mean like yeah now now yes <laughs> like Ooh. like blm would have a heyday with that sh you know mm -hmm. and be like um 
No. Yeah, there's but a lot to be said today. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the show now. If you look at the show now from, like, then, like, you know, it's kind of like, woo. Mm. Like, yes, some things are relevant, but something mm, mm, right. mm. didn't quite hold up. Well, and, and I think that's always true, to be fair. Mm-hmm. I think our our viewpoint is always 2020 when we look to the past. We could look at other TV shows. We could always look at any form of entertainment and be like, oh, yeah, that probably was not the best yeah. choice of, you know, representation or storyline, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that may be. So that being said. Um, but you know, it's, it's kind of the most recent cultural, um, entertainment piece that really kind of got flipped, you know, to the side because it comes out that Mr. Cosby allegedly, um, did a whole lot of not nice things to a whole number of women. And that became a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to for people to interpret that and how to how to deal with it, and then how to respond, like how to, um, I guess make a decision, have a stance. Like, does this person hold the same value for you anymore, or has that changed for you? Um, and you know, where where do you go from there? Like, especially once you take into account, oh. Okay, like this is not a accusation. This is multiple accusations. This mm-hmm. is a whole lot of like evidence, things, like stories. Like there, you know, it becomes a tidal wave at a certain point, and you're just like, wow, like this is sort of insurmountable. Um, and then where do you decide to go from there? So, in full transparency, not that anyone I, I would expect to dig this shit up, um, the last tour. I believe that Bill Cosby did was towards the beginning of the revelations about what had gone on with him. And I had bought for my mom tickets to go see him. And we did, we went and saw him and wow. it, it was not the best show. I will admit, mm-hmm. um, because it was, I could feel it in the air in the auditorium in the theater that like, people had learned and knew some stuff and was mm-hmm. like, is he going to talk about it? Is he not going to talk about it? Like, <laughs> this is sort of awkward. And he didn't. He didn't talk about it, but he also was not at the top of his game. And to be fair, he's older and mm-hmm. aging, so he is not, you know, in his 30s and 40s, jumping around. Well, not that he really jumped around, you know, but... but you I know, know. Yeah, we know what right. you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. He, he made a point of sitting in a chair and talking from a chair pretty much the whole time. So, <laughs> which he, to be fair, he did do a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, but he would he would sit in the chair, do some talking, get up, move around a little bit, sit back down. So he was a little up and down in some comedy acts. Well, just so everyone aware, uh, well, aware is aware. Um, he's currently eighty three years old. So, yeah. But still, you know, still it's. Right. It's 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 not just that, you know, I'm sure it's not just that. I'm sure there's a lot, you know, pressing at the time on his mind, you know. Um right. and a lot of like it's I will admit this was this one was difficult. I will I will own this one was difficult. Um as someone who really admired him. And to be blunt, the the facade that he portrayed, um, that's who you want it to be. You know, mm-hmm. when you were when you were you know a black child my age, seeing a successful black person on TV was rare. And not only that, the show was good, not so much now, but in at that time, <laughs> the show right. was good. It was it was it was popular. It was groundbreaking. Um, it was relevant. <laughs> it it made way books. for things like Family Matters. Yeah, it made yeah. way for a lot of shows to kind of present black people on TV. Mm-hmm. It was it was a great you know it was one of those shows. Yeah. But to then see and find you know be hit in the head or hit in the face with this harsh reality that he's not perfect 
and he's not um um this golden goose this 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 i don't want to compare him to a god but like he was right. to, to to for a lot of us yeah he was very like oh my god bill cosby like we love them we care for him we cool. all and then yeah to find out now that yeah and I think the the first level that you were talking about, David, that's important about these people that we're going to discuss very briefly is the first thing is that recognition of, oh, you're not perfect. Yep. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. So I will say this about like just to, for me as far as like my opinion on the Bill Cosby situation is when I found out that he was a pervert, I was like, oh, all right, whatever. Like, and I mean that just in the broadest, like minimalist scope to know that like apparently he was a horny man, mm -hmm. like – and wanted to have sex with women. I'm like, and? Like, yeah. why is this a scandal? But I've already kind of taken this stance on this podcast about a great many things, including, you know, like, the Clinton scandal. I was yeah. like, so what? He, like, got a blowjob. Like, yeah, and it was in the White House, and that probably wasn't appropriate, but, you know. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I think we have that, like, that's the first thing mm -hmm. that we kind of struggle with, especially as an American society, because we are so fucked up pious like you know we're yeah. so mm, yeah we have these like concepts of like Pretty. morality that really need to be like questioned right. uh and possibly shifted so uh would we like to move on to the next individual i want to actually read some of the things that lloyd has put into post oh okay it's, it is kind of in, you know it is what i was kind of talking about yeah. but it's mm -hmm. So Lloyd kind of gave us a couple of comments. He says, the Cosby show was a massive thing in Ghana, absolute family entertainment, and was aired basically nonstop for all of the 90s. It represented more than just black people living the American dream. We were just happy to have black people on our TV, unlike basically all of American TV we got. And then for the truth to come out about Cosby basically destroyed everything me and my family loved in my childhood. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what it is. Um, Right. And and it's probably more true for a, a lot, of, especially for the African-American community, um, for the black community. Right. Um, but what it ultimately comes down to um, in a lot of ways is power. That's what some of this kind of comes down to. You know, we bring these people gain this. You talked about this earlier, like they get this sort of level air of power and they use it in not so good ways um mm -hmm. i don't know the f i i was trying to read the wikipedia article really quickly to kind of refresh my memory about the everything that went on um but the one thing i see is it says there's more than 60 women have accused him mm -hmm. um now he was found guilty of three counts and he's in jail now um mm -hmm for three to 10 years. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a rough blow, but it, it's a sign that justice in a small way, at least can be served. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think, you know, Lloyd's perspective is really important about how Cosby was international. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, all of these individuals, I think we're going to discuss briefly today, are international in some fashion, like in terms of how they're seen. And this is why it gets even more complicated because it's not just like a local celebrity, so to speak, or someone who's popular within a certain community. Yeah. Even that in and of itself is a struggle for us at times. But then mm -hmm. when they have like a worldwide global impact through what they do, because yeah. they have that accessibility, because they've been promoted, because they're so popular, um, that then you know becomes the the challenge mm -hmm. of how you think about them and what you do going forward. Mm -hmm. Ready for our next yeah. individual? Let's go to sure. the next individual. Yeah, I think I I have a comment, but I think it's more of something that after we cover all these, to kind of like it would be something as a whole because I have my thoughts. But I'm gonna hold on until after that. All right, so <laughs> this is this is sort of the hot button one. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so if we had a timeline of reference, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Bill Cosby's kind of over. 
Um, <laughs> we've re- we've replaced that scandal with other scandals, some of them a little bit more recently, and that's who these three um, are in this case. So let's talk about uh, the uh, the one that I think is really challenging a certain fandom at the moment, mm-hmm. uh, and that's J.K. Rowling. Mm-hmm. So if you have watched the documentaries, read the articles, are aware of the of the background, author living off of the government system with the baby writing the first story, becomes successful, gets published, has a whole series of books that eventually become films. The films lead to a portion of a large amusement park chain. It's now like got an online, you know, fandom website with memberships. I mean, it it's if you think of the Harry Potter universe as an entity, um, and this is not the right wording, but given the pandemic, you'll understand in a moment, like it has infected worldwide, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. conceptually, that people want to be a part of this imaginary concept. Mm-hmm. Where there is a magical world versus what is called the muggle world, the, you know, the human world, and what, where those things kind of intermix and if they don't intermix and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, well, it, uh, I also want to say that we also had pushed her up in our community because she has said, said that uh, uh, Albus Dumbledore was gay. Right. Which, which, which kind of gave her a little bit of a notch up for us. But... Right. I hand it over to you. And that also became complicated as people have now looked back and pointed out that technically it's rewriting history. And there have been a whole series of examples of that in which, but you say that now, but you didn't say that then. Mm-hmm. So what, what's, what's the dealio there? <laughs> um, anyway. Right. So now uh, JKR has revealed and I haven't actually read into this a whole lot because it's apparently incredibly well documented and it is very disheartening to me. So this is why like, I haven't read into it because I'm very conflicted about this concept that this individual that has this much um, power, kind of as you were saying earlier, Damon, you know, in mm-hmm. terms of like the accolade and the, you know, the popularity and all of this stuff and the wealth that we've given to them we've, you know, realized that they're not a very nice human being because apparently JKR, you know, is transphobic Mm -hmm. and doesn't, like, and apparently keeps uh, not doubling down. I don't even know what level we're on right now. Like, (laughs) you know, just keeps over and over and over again, like, doing things to promote the concept that trans individuals are not, like, that trans lives don't matter, that trans individuals are not to be, like, honored or, you know, um, seen as a as a as a typical reflection of humanity just like everybody else is like it's just it's sort of mind-boggling to me because i'm like but you wrote a story like about struggle and being you know what i mean and i think that's why the lgb community really saw themselves within it i don't want to speak on behalf of the trans community because now obviously this is like a like a viral (laughs) issue The, the reality is, you know, we've got someone who is very much walking, talking, breathing, apparently, and consistently this this line of thought. And, you know, and I'm just, all I see are headlines anymore. Retweeted this, posted this, responded. And I'm just like, I don't keep thinking is, go away. Just, yeah. just stop. Because yeah. it's, it's incredibly disappointing and disheartening. And it really makes me feel like I don't want to have anything to do with any of it. But I also was not a diehard fan. So, like, like I never went to the level necessarily to sort myself, to pick a house, to have colors. Like, mm-hmm. I have visited, you know, Diagon Alley. I have been, you know, to the amusement park. So I have been immersed in the world. I did not buy a wand. I did try mm-hmm. butterbeer. You know what I mean? I have an opinion yeah. about that. That's for another show, another day. <laughs> Perhaps a, a, let's talk about food. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, so it's like I'm kind of really on the outskirts of things. Mm-hmm. And I'm even then I'm frustrated because I'm like I kind of it was a horrible way to reference it. I kind of bought in mm-hmm. to the fantasy yeah. of this whole thing. Agreed. It's been a it's rough in this particular situation because 
you tend to think someone who has built this world about people who are essentially different, you know, that are being educated and trained and, and, um, shown how wonderful and powerful their differences are would be more understanding and respectful of the differences that we have in our real lives. And I think that's part of what it is, is that you would think that this Arthur would understand why her comments and her words and her triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, you know, doubling down on this shit is is um, causing such a backlash to her fans and causing so many problems with them. Um, I don't. I don't. You know. I, I'm. I will. I will admit. I'm like you, Gary. I've not really been following all of the stories. I know what's going on because I'm not stupid, and I've been on you know the internet, like Twitter or anything for you know a while. So it's kind of because it, it's almost every couple of months. It's been. Did you see what J.K. Rowling just said again, or just did just mm. now, or whatever? Like the recent thing has been the the shirts and the buttons and the you know memor- the tchotchkes that she has recently bought of shit, like very 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 transphobic shit. Like it is it is pretty fucking awful when you when you see the things that she's recently bought and has been pushing out on her Twitter page. Yeah. Um, it, cause it, it, you know, like, like I was saying, it's, it's that like, holy shit. Like, why is she, why would someone who has created this world, this fantasy, this, this people where people can be who they are. And she's now coming back and kind of saying, well, I don't believe these people are who they are. That these these trans people are, God, I, I, it hurts to even say it like that. <laughs> are being who they are, right. you know? It's just it 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 that I think is the biggest like issue. Um, I know at least for me it is because it just doesn't compute. But at the end of the day, we've seen it happen before. We've seen mm. people who are are. Doing well, I mean, well, I'll just put it like be blunt. Like the NBA, like I mean, I forget what it was recently. The NBA manager that was speaking very negatively about his players and was saying very racist things about his players. Like you're fucking making money from these people, and your your reality is showing, your truth is showing, is what is coming out, and that's kind of the. Like, it's like that, like I said, that crux, like, oh shit, like, why can someone who is essentially should be supportive and probably has, you could see in pictures, like, hanging out with these people and doing all these things, and then suddenly they're saying these words or doing these things or putting these things online about the total opposite of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, your plane, your initial plane was all inclusive. Yet all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you're including this, excluding this one little bit. Well, and and this is the part that is the biggest hypocrisy to me. I'm like, you made a fantasy world mm-hmm. where anything is possible. Yeah, yeah. Do, I mean. Do we, like, is anybody else lost on on that? Like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> you made up an imaginative, like, imaginative, like, version of reality in which anything is possible, and yet you are choosing to say, well, this is not possible. Like, you are drawing a line, and I'm kind of like, huh? Like, you have you have a fantastical mind to say that this is a possibility. Granted, it is all you know fictional, and yet you are not willing to accept a, a reality for individuals. Like, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. It's so um it's it's uh, it yeah, like that's I get that. You know, anything is possible in this, you know, fantasy that you've created in your mind that you've wrote these books about, you've come from 
this low, you know, space in your, you know, in your personal life, and you're now this gazillionaire, what have you, because of this world that you have created for other people to enjoy and, and be entertained by. And now we're dealing with like the fact that you're kind of a bitch. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm using that word because there's another word that came to mind. I was like, nope, I'm going to be nice ish. <laughs> right. It, it, it doesn't make sense. But here we are like mm. it, it, it doesn't make sense but here we are um the the and and i think the, the thing i think the thing that like that bothers me the most is that she's not backing down mm. like i think that's the the big one for me is the fact that she does she's not backing down she's not like taking time and maybe thinking about it and maybe might come to a different opinion after like all of this backlash. No, not her. No, no. Fuck that. Like if my whole, you know, it's it all it almost sounds like to me, and I think maybe this is the worst part, like, fuck my fans. This is what I believe. Mm. Like that's what it feels like to me. Like Fuck my fans, fuck the community, fuck all of these people that have supported me and bought my books and spent their money and all of that shit. Like, fuck them. Fuck all of them. Here's what I believe, and I'm going to stick to that. And that's, I think, like I said, that's probably the worst part for me. Because I'm sure she's seeing it and reading it and hearing about it. And I mean, she's probably going to really feel it because I believe there's a game coming out, like a video game or something along that soon. Because I've been, you know, I've been following other um, gaming sites and stuff. And I remember them talking about this game coming out. And she's probably really going to feel it when it, when it, when it bombs. Well, yeah. so I've, I've seen two different Twitter thread, like kind of commentaries about the game thing that's coming. One of them is, don't you dare buy this game and give her any more money. And then there's another thread, which was actually like a very long, like running thread by somebody who I thought made a very intelligent con like posting saying, you could buy the game and here is why. The money that has already been given to the devil in this case is done. Like the licensing agreement is done. The money that's to be made is done in video games. There isn't so much of a residual, like, you know, percentage or whatever. And I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they went on to say, remember that all the people that made this game possible have to put food on their table, a roof over their head. Like, so not buying this game is actually detrimental to all the developmental hours that went into yeah. this game possible. True. So, I I don't know. Like I I see both sides of it. Like mm -hmm. like you know, do not do anything. You know that is going to help support and give this person any more platform, or recognition. Um, and then on the other side, it's like yeah, but all these other people worked hard to make this thing happen, and they are not responsible for the person at the top. True. It's it's the I'm, I guess the catch twenty two kind of thing in yeah. a sense. Well, and you can also look at it as yes, that's perfectly absolutely correct but if again you don't purchase it then we'll see the failure of the game which means that that licensing won't happen again like there won't be a sequel or another game based in the same world to license to give money to jk rowling mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. so which is an another way of looking at it yeah it's it's going to be problematic i think either way yeah and i think people are making those decisions and making those choices we've been hearing about it you know like should i burn the books as it were and i am personally of the ilk of no like to be blunt you've already bought the book the money's already gone so right. there's no real need to like destroy them 
you might want to pack all your Harry Potter memorabilia and stuff up that you bought over years if you don't wish to remain in the community. Right. And like put it away or what have you. I don't, I don't, I don't like my mind goes, oh, you can donate it. But I'm like, well, no, then that perpetuates the, anyway. But like, well, right. And there <laughs> lies the conflict, right? You know, yeah. like, how do you handle that kind of stuff? Like, so there, there is something to be said for the secondhand market, like mm-hmm. for books to be resold, the publisher, the author, nobody gets any of that money. Same thing with games. Um, you know, so all the forms of entertainment can be black marketed or secondhand marketed or whatever you want to call it, you know, like, so to keep that, that from being a thing. So yeah, I mean, there's there's something to be said for that. So yes, if they have memorabilia and you didn't want to keep it anymore out of a personal thing, you could potentially donate it to someone who like would be willing to take it. And um, you like you'd have to work hard. I think you'd have to find somebody that's in agreement to take the items, has the same philosophy and stance as you, and yet does not have the um, I guess the decision or whatever you know to be like i'm still willing to embrace this um you know it's kind of like i hate to say it this way but it's like i'm canceling the person that's responsible for all this but i'm you know still you know going to support the the community there are a lot of people that are kind of having that conflict and that's kind of what it is you know for many people there are there are a lot of people that got really you know, involved, engaged in like the Harry Potter world and Harry Potter universe. And, and it became parts of their lives, you mm-hmm. know, um, it was something for many of us to kind of focus on, um, for sure. So that's going to be a conflict for you, right? You know, you're going to have to make, but you're going to have to make those decisions for yourself. I don't think you can have someone tell you what to do in these situations. Um, but I do know, which is the way I feel about it, I would not like I would not destroy what you have because that's already been she already got what that was. She got what she was supposed to get from that shit. Right. I, I think the reality is is that you'd have to really d- do a deep dive on the financing to figure out whether or not she gets a penny out mm-hmm. of what it is you're ever you're considering. Yeah. And by now, by the time we're discussing this, maybe there's already, you know, an organization, a group, a community that's like creating a website that's like, you know, helping pull those pieces together for us and we're just not aware of it. Yeah. Um, and if not, I'm putting that out into the universe because I believe that if you say <laughs> things, like it will become reality. And I prefer that because I would be more than willing to visit a website and I click on a thing and it says, yes, if you watch this movie, she gets this amount of money. If you don't watch it, you know, it'd be an easier decision for me to make, so to speak. Mm. Um, so I want to move on to our our, <laughs> our third and fourth persons. Mm. Uh, so RuPaul Charles. This is the one that might be the, a little bit scandalous. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about we have an entire, <laughs> entire other show series. Well, <laughs> right. Like, that, that, I've been that. thinking about this for quite a long time now. No, okay, mm-hmm. sure. I've been, I have been part of the RuPaul Charles, like, following, I don't know how else to phrase it, for a number of years. Like, really appreciate conceptually where RuPaul Charles comes from. Like, in terms of, you know, philosophy, mindset, somewhat spirituality, like, you know, things of that nature. However, that being said, the show, the TV show, RuPaul's Drag Race, has catapulted the popularity of RuPaul Charles and the art of drag, which is all to the good. But now it has become problematic over the past, like, six, seven, eight years. And the biggest thing is about, oh, what's that? That's right. We're back to the same topic. Transphobia. Mm -hmm. So the show has decided that it will not have a certain way of handling trans contestants. Now, you could point out and say, well, this one came out as trans after this one came out as trans during blah, 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 blah. We technically have not had a trans contestant from before coming onto the show all the way through the show to the very end. Yeah. 
Um, and that and that leads to other categories, bio queens, like you know, and so on and so Drag forth. Kings so, and right. all those things, yeah. So it gets very complicated. And then, and I haven't looked any of this up either. This has also come up on social media like recently about RuPaul Charles and George, her husband, his husband, having a ranch, and apparently they frack on the ranch mm-hmm. for uh, you know. Um, I'm totally like blanking on what you want to call it. Um, biofuel, not biofuel, mm-hmm. but you know, like natural gas, oil, fossil fuels. That's the word, what I was looking for. Um, and how questionable that is for the environment. I mean, like, so I was just like, wow, like you're, and now let's add the other layers. Drag queen, celebrity, black, mm-hmm. gay man, mogul. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of layers to this individual. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't have an, a, a, an affirmed opinion, but I will say this. I am no longer shiny-eyed and, like, yeah. following lock, stock, and barrel. I am much more, you know what? Uh, I'm not so sure, Missy. You know, like I, I, I really kind of take more of a of a distant stance about stuff. I am supportive of the art of drag. I am not supportive of the concept of saying, like, that is acceptable, that is not acceptable. I get that there's a contest that's the, the idea of the reality show, and you have to draw a line and make a measurement, but it's getting much more convoluted and complicated over time. And as a good friend of mine has repeatedly pointed out within the very same season, certain judges are contradictory. They say one thing and then they say another thing and they completely, you know, do a 180 and you're like, what the fuck is your problem? Like last week, mm-hmm. that wasn't good. This week, it's good. Like, so yeah. it's got, there's a lot of issues mm-hmm. surrounding this individual. And I'm just kind of like, <sighs> yeah, it's unfortunate. It's that whole looking up to somebody and then being like, oh, hmm. Yes, I am now battling with the whole you are a human and you are flawed just like the rest of us and there's that. Yeah. Balloon deflated as it were. Maybe not completely flat, but right. like balloon deflated. Reality sets in and the person is as you said not as like awe-inspiring as they once were. And they have removed themselves from reality in a way. Awesome like that. that is that is the one thing that all four of these people have in common. I can say affirmatively, while you came from a certain place, you are not from that place anymore. Like you are you are distantly removed of that mm-hmm. place. So you become so far removed from that that you're you no longer almost in a way you no longer see it. Right, and you can't represent it. Yeah. Like, so to talk about where you come from, that always annoys me now. Because I'm like, blah, 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 blah. your origin story does not, does not hold counter anymore. You, like, you are, you've, you've moved beyond and you are now of a certain thing. And yes, at any moment, everything could be taken away from you and you could start all over again from the rock bottom. But mm-hmm. guess what's not happening? That, yeah. that is not happening. Mm-hmm. So... You have chosen yeah. to surround yourself with successful people who have made good decisions, who help keep you where you are. That's kind of what celebrity does. That's the most fucked up thing about celebrity. Like you become popular and then everything in your life is about staying popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wealthy. Whatever. Yeah. Trending. Hashtag. Yeah. No yeah. Fucks to give. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. RuPaul. Um, it's and and that's the I think for me that's part of the issue is RuPaul will, will consistently mention her upbringing and where she came from and who she was in defense of some of the things that she has done, mm. and I think that's part of the problem too. While, like you said, while we can respect where you came from, you are no longer there. You have become this bigger thing, this entity, this representative that is so far removed from that. Right. That while it is a part of you, it is a much smaller part now than it was then. 
you know, and that's all. And I, I want to say that's true for a lot of celebrities because I do kind of feel that way. But for some, it it becomes almost a a negative. Wait, yeah. Wait, I'm not saying this right. <laughs> um, it uh. Anyway, sorry, the, the, the train just derailed. I apologize. It's okay. I mean, I, I don't think you're wrong. I think I think to make the statement, you know, that is correct, the reality is you are not that anymore. Like, and so here's here's an example for those that kind of follow drag culture. Lady Bunny is more down to earth and realistic about life as a drag queen than RuPaul is. True. I mean, so. Well, I yeah, while I doubt Lady Bunny is probably the one that's constantly doing her own makeup. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, I don't know. But, like, that's been my biggest kind of thing. My mm. biggest thing, especially for the show in particular, is there's a lot of critiques from RuPaul about, like, dress and clothing and makeup and what they look like, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, bitch, like, you have a team. <laughs> you have a designer that makes your clothes for you. You just have to put the shit on. You are no longer making the clothes for yourself. You are no longer putting the makeup on you for yourself. You're no longer making the hair yourself. So all the things that you critique and criticize and judge the drag queens on, you have been so far removed from that I feel it is, you are not able to properly judge on. Hmm. But anyway, but let's let's. I think no, we can remember this is this is an all tea, no shade. So what we need now is instead of a shade fan, we need a tea fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I tried to find one, and I yeah yeah. They're so still, hard. Still on I, the I, hunt. I, I'm on the hunt. By the way, like folks, so fandom, if you find one, like send the email to comes out loud at gmail.com, <laughs> or send it to to me directly at theatercubs79 at gmail.com. Or message me on Twitter, pup dot under, pup, 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 underscore under. Jo join the Telegram chat. Let us know if you can find one. Like by all means, I right. will. I will gladly. Yeah, I would love to so buy the fan. Like David's looking for a fan that says all T. Or has That's something it. in relation to T. Yeah, like it doesn't has, say like, all. Well, I mean, it could say all tea, no shade, but yes. it would be better if it just said all tea. Yeah, because I already have all a shade. Time. I've got a couple of fans. Of yeah. <laughs> but it would be kind of fun to, like, have a tea fan. Because, anyway. I've, so, oh. speaking of the tea, last person. And this one I added while we were in the midst of the discussion tonight, because it just popped in my head because this has also been a thing recently. And since I was like, well, if we're going to talk about a black gay man, let's talk about a white gay woman. Mm -hmm. uh, try to find some balance in this. Miss Ella DeGeneres. Mm. I have not heard about this. This is news to me. Uh, she is, in some viewpoints, like America's sweetheart, television comedian, talk show host, uber bubbly, blah, blah, blah. And then all this stuff comes Kinky out. Game A lot host. of people have opinions about what she's like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I have seen way too many retweets from actual approved accounts on Twitter by other comedians who have said flat out consistently, not a nice person. I can affirm the stories that have been told. Stay away. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <gasps> yikes. Mm -hmm. Like, your own community is not going to help you out. Like, not good and i honestly haven't been following that close because she does not have that much of an impact on my life um mm -hmm. perhaps if i was an independently wealthy person or you know could not have a job and stay home and watch television all the time and then watch the tv show maybe it would have some cultural relevance to me um there was an apology apparently recently i did not even bother because i'm like i'm not about this i yeah because so, I don't even want to go through the moment and be like, mm -hmm. are those real tears? If there are tears, you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just not for me. Yeah. So I'm reading very quickly from the 
Wikipedia page just because it will kind of it, I don't I don't remember all of this because it's again like, like Gary Ellen Ellen don't mean shit to me I'll just be honest with you like <laughs> like this is an all Tino say so but let, let, let me just be honest like mm -hmm. whatever Ellen okay but so for those that don't know so I'm going to read this this is under controversies on the Wikipedia page it says in July 2020, BuzzFeed News read articles in which anonymous former employees accused the Genesis show of being a toxic workplace, accused the executive producers of harassment, as well as an atmosphere with racist comments and microaggressions. Um, in July, Warner Media began an internal investigation of the show's workplace following the allegations. The Jenner's published a letter apologizing to her staff. As a result, three executives were let go from the show, and the show vowed to take steps to change the culture. The generous apologized again during the 18th season's opening. So there's that. Right. So this kind of comes back around to what we said earlier in the show, which is this. If the individual kind of doubles down, triples down, whatever, mm -hmm. does not make amends, does not attempt to meet at the table mm -hmm. to change then like no offense like your silence your your continued like whatever behavior is kind of like the, is the key issue mm -hmm. um i really have been trying my best in terms of the concept that i heard of recently in my life which is to truly apologize is not to say I'm sorry, is not to say the words I apologize, it's to make a difference. It's to change the behavior to not have whatever the issue yeah. was happen again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it it is it one of the seen. Yeah, it is one of the things that has become prevalent. Um, cancel culture is a thing. Calling people out on their their actions and behaviors. We see it online almost, you know, all the time. Um, um, as someone who is very well involved in the kink community, a lot of things come out on occasion of people that are, are not so squeaky clean, if that makes sense, which is kind of funny considering kink, but, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's become a, an issue, mm -hmm. um, calling out cancel culture receipts, things of those natures, um, Speaking in the, in in racist, homophobic, transphobic um, kind of ways, and then not necessarily making amends or not apologizing for their behavior and not looking or seeking um, to change their behaviors in a positive way, it happens, right. and that is unfortunate, you know. Um, in, in regards to these four, so far, the only one that I know of that has publicly, at least, apologized and potentially maybe moving forward has been Ellen. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be, you know, again, I'll, I'll be no shade. Um, Bill Cosby's in jail, so he's paying the penalty for his behavior. Um, J.K. Rowling, no offense, I, I, I highly, highly doubt is going to back down at this point. Um, so to me, fuck her. I don't, you know, I don't, she can do whatever she wants. I'm never going to buy or do anything in relation to her again. Her name has been tarnished in my mind right. until I see some level of change and amend in her RuPaul, oh gosh, that's going to be harder. But I do kind of feel that there is no, there's going to be a lot that has to be done. And it's going to have be, and to be blunt, it's going to have to start with the show. That is her most popular, most open, most out there kind of format and you know, property, as it were. So if the show doesn't change, mm. That's going to kind of, I hate to say it, that's going to show me her true colors or his true colors. And that will potentially be a problem. Like, I'm just well, going to, like, 
And I will say this, like people could probably point out about how there's been a lot of like, you know, through the course of the pandemic and Black Lives Matter, like there's been all this stuff that's been put out there about being more supportive of, you know, queens of color and this kind of stuff. And the thing I'm paying attention to is, but where's RuPaul at all this? Mm -hmm. She done disappeared. Yeah. World of Wonder has put out a fuck ton of shit. Um, you know, all the queens are being supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that's out there that's like, you know, affirmative and doing this and doing that and reprimanding, you know, like the shitty behavior of some of the fandom. Like, but it, but notably, it is not RuPaul that's saying these things. No. So, like, it's yeah, kind of one of those, like, like as as a journalist that I follow says, watch what they do, not what they say. Mm -hmm. So if they're not actually saying anything and not doing anything, that's even like probably doubly worse. But yeah. And then, like I said with Ellen, at least we're seeing a little bit. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, a, it's it's if anything, it's an attempt to be. She she's showing that she she heard us. Mm hmm. And she's heard her audience. It needs to be OK. This is definitely not something that's good. We need to to do something about that. And she's making the attempt uh, at making amends. Yeah. And so, and and I think that's one thing that needs to be possible. Uh, the rolling thing ends up being: this is my viewpoint. This is how how I think it is, and it's really difficult just for ideas of somebody or beliefs for people to change mm -hmm. how they believe something. Uh, there, I, I know there's been plenty of uh, uh, things I've seen i want to say that there was even an episode of uh bill nye saves the world where they kind of talk about it or it was something else i don't remember but <laughs> but there were there was something that i saw where they were talking about that the more you try to convince somebody that their viewpoint is wrong the less the chance that they will change their mind so well, it, right. The, so it becomes very problematic in the J.K. Rowling sense, where maybe we can see uh, get her to understand that this is a fact of life. It's not true for everybody, but this is how some people are. That's just a thing that that's real and and true, and you shouldn't deny somebody for for being trans because that's mm -hmm. who they are. It, there's nothing you can do about it you think that if you think that gay people are just people that's just the way they are there's then why can't trans people be in a similar similar sense so right but trying to get her viewpoint to change is is the problem is is going to be the major problem trying to break through that sort of sort of thing and it's hard to have somebody make amends when they can't and like i can't change my viewpoint uh i think part of it is she's instead of like backing off and trying to you know just let it be and just not keep talking about it and keep pushing it i think that would help in some ways but it's not going to actually change anything besides just making the fire and fury just die down a bit. You know, uh, the her level of acceptance and, and everything in our culture has just, all right, it's stuck there. There's nothing you can do to bring it back unless you somehow wholeheartedly with your heart believe that trans people are people too in, in, and just like any other LGBTQ uh, member, they're all the same along with the heterosexuals. So uh, it, it becomes a major problem with that. Bill Cosby could uh, uh, would be able to, is kind of making amends by, by being in jail, but of course he probably didn't want to be there and just not doing that apologizing and making sure that it doesn't happen again that could be helpful but he did it in the past which is gonna which has already tarnished his reputation 
and there's nothing you can do to remove that that tarnish from knowing that but we can at least satisfy i'm not sure if that's the right word people by showing that, that you are not going to do that again that the new person that you are is going to make sure that that never happens again that's something that can be changed uh, and uh i don't know with RuPaul. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay it's okay it's 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 not a culture that i'm really engrossed in or anything so i really can't can't say for that yeah but I, I think you mentioned she she can make changes um and and even be like okay we know that trans people exist trans people can be queens how do we put that into the culture of the show uh, and, and and make sure that that they're being more inclusive there can possibly be be ways the other things i don't know i i think it's one of those yeah. things where where the more you go up and not stay rooted from where you are you know you may be up because there's plenty of people who may have gotten millions of dollars rich and famous but are still good people yeah like uh, uh, actually, I I believe Jada Jada and Will Smith. Yeah, they are great people, and they make sure that they try to make sure that their children are great people, and are willing to listen to them and let them be who they are. Um, mm -hmm. I was watching a documentary about something. Actually, I think I was QCing it for something I was doing for work, where uh, apparently their son, whose name uh, 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 escapes me for some reason. Uh, Jaden. Jaden uh, wanted to be emancipated. Not because he wanted to leave his family, that he didn't like his parents or anything like that, but it was a decision that he came to. And while they kind of felt sad about it, they, at least they mentioned that Jada was like, oh, that kind of hurt, they supported him. And mm -hmm. even when he was emancipated, it didn't mean that he moved out immediately. <laughs> he he stayed in the home for a while. There's they are still a loving family, mm -hmm. uh, very successful family, and kind of keeping that root, knowing what's good and and everything like that. I think that's kind of the big thing. That's where really more of the ideal of what we want to see from these people. Bill Cosby, that should have been what Bill Cosby was like based off of stuff he was showing with the, how he, he loved kids and and mm -hmm. the Cosby show showing kind of this uh, uh, American dream lifestyle for the black uh, uh, family, for black people in, in uh, the 80s and 90s. It's all of these things could have been better if they just remembered where they came from, where they were, and stay rooted in that that place. Be like, yeah, I have money, but it doesn't mean that I I can be a douche. And that's where where things kind of stand for me is it's having making sure that even if you get that power, it's it's like the Spider Man thing with great power comes great responsibility. And that's what, what these uh, very successful people that we appreciated some of their great works need to be showing and that if they want to make sure that they still are in that place, that they have those fans, uh, not just PR wise, speak from, from the good book. If you had, if JK Rowling had never mentioned anything about her transphobia kept that privately to herself she didn't start retweeting things on twitter we would have never known and we would not be in the place that we are right now uh, although right now she's more like oh, fuck you this is how i'm gonna be and i'm gonna use my power to to preach it and 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 support those who had the same ideals as me but she mm -hmm. just stayed back in the shadows with that one aspect for her the only problem is she's still a douchebag <laughs> <laughs> yeah she is she, she's still a bad person for yeah. this i 
we I just suppose don't if, know. We just wouldn't have known yeah, about it. We just would never have known about it. So it, it's all these back and forth things that make things difficult. Um, and mm -hmm. like for me, if we're talking, but if we go back, and this is kind of what I like. I wanted to was mentioning before about my opinions about some of these things is. I find out these people are douchebags. The only problem is I can't not appreciate good works. So these are bad people, but they've done some of these good works. And it's hard to, I, or it's kind of like I can easily I feel like I can re easily separate the two and be like, okay, I don't like J.K. Rowling, but I absolutely love these these Harry Potter books. There's nothing I'm, I'm, I'm going to do to stop reading them, enjoying the world of Harry Potter, because I really, 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 really enjoy this world. And just having that difference, and I'm focusing more on the world than the person who actually created it. Mm-hmm. Which gives me kind of the catch twenty two of of being being I, I don't want to support this person I, I don't want them I want them to change I want them to be in a better place to to not harm any communicate that treat others how you want to be treated you want to be treated well well make sure you're treating everybody no matter what their race creed color whatever it is as long as we're we're being uh, friendly, let people be who they are. Um, you may not like somebody, but it doesn't mean you have to put them down. Just kind of like avoid it, keep out of the way, and let everybody just, you know, you be you boo. And uh, just try to make sure that, and as long as we're, you know, we just love thy neighbor, <laughs> to, to quote a Christian philosophy. Well, it's not necessarily you have to be like, passionately like uh in love and and have sex with one you can at least not hurt them you know let them be who they are and appreciate them for being who they are not and not hurting anybody else well and and i think like in the live chat like a bunch of the responses we got like so i want to as we wrap up here, kind of point out like so um, Sidekick Productions had said if I'm not sure if Bill Cosby is making amends as so much as an example of justice being served, mm -hmm. which I think is a, a really good point. Um, Owen, in regards to JK, said she's in a position of influence and that's what's dangerous. And I think mm -hmm. that's true about all mm -hmm. of these individuals. Like, yeah, they have influence over us through their popularity via pop culture slash entertainment and how that affects us and viewpoints. To be fair, Ellen DeGeneres' coming out on television was groundbreaking and was the was one step in many in representation of LGBTQ individuals in the television like entertainment medium. That does not exonerate her from being a bad person, though. Mm -hmm. Like it does not like, you know, wash away her sins for being an asshole to people on set or whatever the accusations are. Like if that's really the circumstance. So I, it's it's a double-edged sword. I think that mm -hmm. that's the key issue about this concept of the show, pedestal to cancel. Like everyone kind of makes their own decisions for themselves. And I hope more than anything, individuals will take a moment and try to work with another person to process why they feel the way they feel about something or why they're supporting an individual when you may not agree with them. Mm -hmm. Like meet them where they are and then try to determine, you know, what the path forward is from there, you know, because I, I could fully understand why someone might say to me, you know, like, I can't believe you like RuPaul, fuck that bitch, blah, 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 you know, I'm over yep. her tired ass and all this kind of stuff. Yep. That's great. You could feel that way. I don't, but I also would like you to understand and accept my perspective. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it. It doesn't mean that, like, you know, that we're, you know, going to be the best buddies about this particular mm -hmm, issue, but mm -hmm. at least, like, you know, let's try to entertain and have a conversation instead of, like, everything is not a war, everything is not a battle, like, yeah, everything is not about choosing a side, so to speak. 
Yeah, not everything is. Yeah, agree. That's the big part. Not everything is about choosing a side. It's not one. It's not. It not everything is about one way or the other way. Like there's sometimes a middle ground. Sometimes there's a common ground. Like that's that's the way it is. The way life should be, in a lot of ways. There are some things that we could potentially disagree on. Mm -hmm. There are things that can potentially be okay to disagree on. You know, certain certain concepts, certain things that are okay to quote unquote disagree on, are not be on the same page of. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we should be against each other. You know, entertainment right. is entertainment. The thing, the the four people we've we've talked about in particular, it's been mostly entertainment. It's been entertainment people with 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 shitty shit that they've done. You know, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I'm abused by the, I'm abused by the shitty shit. They're just, yeah. There's shitty people that have done shitty things. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So, but it's for in a lack of a better phrase, it's all entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's not life or death. Right. Like it's it's not like. It is not like the end of the world. If I never saw, if I essentially purposefully never watched another RuPaul's Drag Race thing in the world, it's not going to be that awful in my life. Like, if I went to that extreme, I won't. I'm just going to be honest. I like the show. I like supporting queens and drag race and whatever. It has changed. If you've heard me recent on recent seasons of the show, I have some concerns. <laughs> <laughs> on our on our DR show. There's some, there's some obvious things now that have in my opinion, change the way I view the show. Um, I'm looking at it from a different lens as I did when I used to first watch the show. The show has is has changed in some ways. Right. Um, same with I'll, I'll like same with like I would put it like a a um a Bill Cosby, you know, I admired him as an adult. You know, Gary, you're talking about the 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 most recent like comedy you know thing that he was on, and kind of how like eh, it was. You know, yes, he was probably off his game because of everything that's going on and age and whatever. But that's probably going to be bound to happen as well. There's only so much you can do, especially in a comedy sense of things. And sometimes, especially for comedy, because of entertainment, it could be hit or miss. You never know until the joke comes out of your mouth. So, again, like, entertainment, I don't think is like a life or death situation. It's not, but it, I want to say it's not necessarily detrimental to life, but it, it it's definitely not a life or death situation. People can listen to it and hear it and take opinions on it and then go to those extremes. But in and of itself, it is not. It, it's it's really kind of ends up being uh, a, a point where we may you may be able to help by uh, protesting by trying to avoid getting money in the pocket. Let's take Chick Fil A for a ex example here. Uh, I'm ne never going to eat at Chick-fil-A. Um, if somebody at, at work had brought a lot of Chick-fil-A sandwiches, I'm going to eat them. I didn't pay for them. But uh, besides the fact that food isn't really that great anyways, but, you know, food is food. Um, and, and it's it's going to be, be things where you're going to cancel, but there's always going to be somebody who either agrees with the person or something where... Mm -hmm. the effect can be marginal mm -hmm. uh, it can still be detrimental but sometimes they end up working around it or they just don't become as popular and they come in but they mm -hmm. can still you know manage they yeah. can still get I mean, by so let's just be honest like who who here really has heard anything really great from Paula Deen in recent years. 
Mm -hmm. I think about it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but you know what? Paula Dean's probably still doing just fine. But, it, it, and this isn't to say, try to, me trying to say, don't cancel. It's, go ahead and cancel. But, you know, it, because it, it, you could be part of that that group that really does help help make a change by by canceling, or it may not do anything. Doesn't mean to that because it's not necessarily doing anything to stop. No, keep it mm -hmm. up. Yeah, as times change and and people continue, people die off because they're getting old. Um, that what you had started right now may end up affecting something in the future. So. Um, but, uh, one respect other people's opinions, like, as I said, if a new Harry Potter movie was to come out, uh, fantastic beaks, beast three or something, um, I, I'm probably going to watch it because I love that world, but I'm watching it for the world, not for the creator. Well, yeah. And it's, as we go to move to wrap up that was one thing i thought about jeff was like you know like bill cosby i don't expect anything more to come out of him and he's already kind of made his money so mm -hmm. yeah like his his justice is is uh, like being attributed to him in terms of being in jail i don't plan on doing anything you know really much um with ellen uh let alone uh you know because she doesn't have any effect on me um <laughs> and, you know, and then rue i'm like kind of keeping at arm's length in a certain aspect yeah and, you know, with JK, like, I was like, I don't plan on having anything to do with her. And then as we were doing this recording tonight, I was like, oh, shit, but there's another movie coming out, I bet. <laughs> and I was like, well, then I will watch it when I watch it, how I watch it. And most likely it's going to be borrowed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be in some fashion, you know, like, it's uh, it's a lot harder now with everything streaming. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, you, 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 you might wait until it goes like what we used to do. Wait until it goes out on video and then rent it from the video store. Like, I mean, you can't do that now, obviously, but like that's kind of the idea. Well, like, like when, eh, it, like it, like when wait, it hits Netflix, wait. you're already I'll paying for Netflix. It something. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, like, like Jeff was saying, like if you watch it on a streaming service, then yeah. the, the how much they're getting paid is kind of a questionable thing. Again, that website would be really helpful to explain how much is being paid <laughs> to the individual. Um, because the reality is, like, this is sort of an aside, but, like, you know, the new Milan movie came out for Disney. I have Disney Plus. And then they rolled it out there, like, premium access. And I was like, fuck you. Because <laughs> I'm not paying $29.99 just so I could watch it sooner than other people. No, thank you. Like, I'll just wait until y'all take that little tag off of it and make it just, like, everything else on the channel that's available, and then I'll watch it. And I'll mm. see if I liked it or not. Because, honestly... Like, granted, y'all made a lot of money, like, in the first couple of days that it came out, but I haven't heard anybody talking about it, and most of the stuff that I saw was not necessarily positive. So that kind of bit you in the ass, I think, but I don't know the full picture. So I feel that way about other things that are to come. It's like, you know, how you how you go about it um, in a certain aspect of things. But yeah, so aftermarket, you know, secondhand market, that kind of stuff will be much more challenging in the future. Um Especially when everything is digital and streaming, it's like you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. maybe someone will will like record it and burn it to a DVD, and then I will get the DVD. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's there, there, there are some site out there with the torrent of it that you can download. So, um, and I also just want to say as uh, we're moving up, you know, Owen, or uh, hold on, let me catch up on the comments and the thread. <laughs> um, so SKP actually said a good comment, which I want to like bring to light and i think this is incredibly true which is um there's a they said i i heard a suggest i heard people suggest a big difference in separating the art from the artist is will the artist still financially benefit from your embrace of the art and the example was jk will still make money lovecraft will not so there's that like i i think that that's also a key factor um you know and again that kind of goes back to that whole like you know that that concept like i need a thing i need a tool come on internet uh you know give us give us an app give it us a thing that you can kind of plug in because if i can put it to a website that tells me 
whether or not I could stream this piece of entertainment on what platform and what fashion, whether or not I have to pay for it or it's free, I'm pretty sure we could figure out some stuff and be able to like report whether or not an artist is actually going to be, you know, making which, money off of something. Which, by the way, can work in the reverse of what we're talking about here. So those people you want to support, you can be like, okay, where are they getting getting the most money from what platform? You can go there and be like, oh, this platform, they're actually getting more money if I'm watching over there or something. For those people that we would want to support more, mm -hmm. more of, so... That would be a good tool. It would probably be very difficult to to, to do because a lot of those are uh, uh, secret uh, 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 contracts that probably won't go public. So, but that isn't to say that someone wouldn't spill the tea. Because while we are recording tonight, apparently the New York Times is posting that they got access to forty five's tax records. And a lot of people, it's now trying to get there talking about it. So mm -hmm. I have faith that somebody somewhere will eventually snitch and spill your shit. Or in this case, they'll spill the tea. Mm -hmm. Then there you go. All right. I think the tea has been spilt. What do you think? This is me dumping out my teapot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> and that, folks, is how we spill the tea. We we drink it all. All right. I suppose. I don't know. Anyways. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to actually move this over to this other screen. If you're still thirsty for more. Yeah. Yeah. They, you, there's plenty of ways where you can spill uh, your tea about the tea. You can pop over to our website, uh, CubsOutLoud.com, leave a comment a blog, shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 60 or otherwise, at 361 we'll talk that's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media uh, outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Kind of on Tumblr. Um, you can also join our entourage chat at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also uh, follow when we plan to go live on these shows. As soon as we figure out when we're actually doing that. At tinyroll.com slash calendar dash col. You can buy merchandise such as a Cubs Out Loud t -shirt, logo t-shirt. A drag. A consent is my foreplay t-shirt. Now that I finally figured out what that, that shirt is representing. Because <laughs> <laughs> we also have trans. We also have bear and, and leather and pup. Uh, let us know if there's any other flags we need to try to uh, figure out for that uh, so that we can put more because we would love to. Uh, that's all in our uh, merch store at zazzle.com slash cups out loud. Remember, you can scroll down to the bottom and change your localization so you, you can save on shipping. Uh, you can also become a patron uh, at patreon.com slash cups out loud where you can get the VOD of the chat log the uh and the pre-show and post-show um on both audio and video at uh, patreon.com slash cubs out loud or if you just want to send us some cash to help uh, improve our equipment you can do that at paypal.me slash cubs out loud you can uh rate us on itunes subscribe to us google play podcasts spotify and over on amazon music you can find um me anywhere in the internet it's box set box puppy box cup box up your other or win gym on twitch on sundays where we do bears and dragons, uh, where this week we've started the section of the adventure that I hate the most, which is just traveling. <laughs> but uh, somebody got an artifact, which was great. He was excited about that. Well, anyway, uh, Damon? If you, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me uh, Theater Cub 79 on most bear-related sites, um, including, uh, and also Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Surprise, surprise. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamber73. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.